What's up, Nerdyverse? I'm Daddy Louie, and in this video, we're going to be taking a look at the 2-4 to four player uh, Funkoverse strategy game. So stick around. Before we get started, if you're new to our channel and you want to see more content like this, start now by hitting the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. I also want to remind everybody uh, that we are running a free giveaway on our YouTube channel right now. You just have to be a subscriber and uh, leave a comment on one of our videos and you're automatically registered. That drawing will be on December 2nd, uh, so uh, make sure that you jump on that before time runs out. Unless you've been sleeping in a closet uh, over the past 20 years or so, everybody knows what Funko is. Funko started in... 1998 uh, but they really blew up back in uh, 2011 2012 when they released Funko Pops um, they're the you know oversized uh, head miniatures uh, they're not really miniatures they're like little statues uh, they started out as bobbleheads and then they went over to statues they still make bobbleheads and the statues now uh, you don't kind of know which one you're gonna get uh, when they release those but um, Funko has recently, uh, within the last couple of weeks, uh, released its own strategy game. Uh, it is called Funkoverse Strategy Game, and uh, it is, of course, uh, let me show you the box here. Got a uh, pops as the miniatures or the play pieces that you're going to use. Uh, they are miniature-sized versions, but they're still nice and big um, and cool. You know, if you're into uh, Funko Pops. So uh, I have had the chance to play this game. We're going to go to the table, crack this open, I'll show you what you get, tell you how you play, and I'll let you know what I think. So if you join me on the table, we'll get started. All right, so at launch, uh, Funkoverse has um, two big box games. Uh, one is the DC version that you see here, and the other is a Harry Potter version comes with uh, Harry and Hermione and um, it also comes with uh, Bellatrix and uh, Voldemort and then they've also released uh, alongside of it four smaller games um, I have the DC one which comes with Catwoman and Robin uh, but then they also have a Harry Potter one which comes with um, Ron and uh, Malfoy and then uh, it, there is a I'm trying to remember there is a Golden Girls one which is kind of cool and there is also a Rick and Morty one which has of course inside of it Rick and Morty and uh, if you'll notice I said that it comes they had uh, four smaller games not four small expansions because this is actually not an expansion it is actually a standalone game so you don't have to get one of the big ones you can get one of the small ones and play right out of the box it comes with everything that you need to play uh, it's just a smaller version it's only for uh, two players whereas the bigger one is technically two to four um, although I think the game plays best at two players but uh, yeah so you can add these into your bigger game or you can, uh, you know, just have the smaller game. Uh, so once you open everything up inside, uh, one thing that I really like, especially as an avid gamer, is that everything comes completely pre-punched and pre-baggied for you. Uh, so it didn't come with sheets of cardboard that you had to punch out the tokens and stuff like that with the additional bags added that you then had to put the things in. Uh, everything came pre-done for you, which was a really nice little touch by Funko. So the pops themselves, as I said, are pretty great. Um, they are smaller than your average size pops. Um, as you can see here with Tommy next to the Joker. Uh, but they're not that much smaller. And the quality is exactly what you'd expect. Uh, big head, small body, all the details that you need are there. Um, and they do come with uh, some bases, which you'll definitely need because some of them with their uh, big heads don't stand up too well, but that's okay because the bases actually play a part in the game uh, based on what color bases you use um, But uh, the game also comes with uh, all the tokens that you would need um, 
and it comes with all the dice that you would need and uh, victory counters as well. Uh, the game also comes with uh, a rule book, which has uh, a link to a how to play video. It also has like uh, beginner rules and then more advanced rules once you've played a game or two. Um, you could definitely play uh, with younger children, especially with just the beginner rules. It's pretty uh, simple. Um, but then even adding in uh, some of the advanced rules, it doesn't get too overly complicated. And uh, you also get uh, the cards that you would need, uh, the ability tracker, which I'll talk about in just a minute, your uh, scenario cards, uh, which I'll also talk about in a minute, and then your board. The board is a uh, hard cardboard, and uh, it is one piece that just kind of folds out, uh, which is a nice little touch. When we first opened it, we kind of thought that maybe they were boards that you just kind of put together, uh, but they are all uh, connected together to make one big board. And it's double-sided, so you get two maps um, on each side. One is like the Joker's Playground, and then the other side is uh, like a generic Gotham City. Uh, so the smaller uh, game comes uh, exactly the same way. Everything is pre-packaged, pre-punched. Uh, it has two miniatures as opposed to four, uh, but it does come with your bases, all your tokens that you would need, dice, and uh, victory counters. And then under that you get all of your cards, uh, your scenarios, your little uh, rule book, same as before, and then you also get your board. Um, the board is, from what I can tell, the same size as the other board. It's just folded differently to fit inside of the smaller box. So one thing that I want to mention real quick that I don't think I mentioned earlier is that all of these games are compatible with each other. So you can have um, matches where you're playing uh, one of the Golden Girls with Batman and uh, Morty from Rick and Morty versus, uh, you know, all of the Harry Potter crew. And you can switch things up like that. And as we all know, Funko has some uh, great uh, licenses, obviously, so we could definitely expect to see some uh, really cool uh, future uh, additions to that as well. Uh, but one of the things that I like about the game is that it is uh, simple to play, simple enough for uh, you to teach non-gamers or, uh, you know, smaller kids, um, but it's deep enough that uh, avid gamers like myself would enjoy. Uh, now all characters have a pretty basic uh, list of actions that they can all do. They can all move, they can all help each other stand up, etc. Uh, but the game also includes cards that uh, have abilities on them for each of the unique characters. And uh, one of the mechanics that I really like about this game is the inclusion of these abilities in the form of these little colored pips down here in the bottom right corner of the teams. So teams are usually made up of three characters each team, and you would combine all of these colors together uh, to make your ability pool, if you will. So in this case, we have a blue and a red, so I would generate a blue and a red token uh, for my uh, ability pool on my team. So what's interesting about that is that you could uh, use that strategy when making your team by lining up uh, characters that use similar colors so that you're generating more of those uh, ability uh, tokens if you will and i'll explain why you want to do that right now so let's say for example on my turn uh, i'm using batman here i've got uh, these two tokens in my uh, ability pool and i choose to activate batman uh, now for Batman, uh, I want to spend my first action, each character gets two actions, uh, to move uh, Batman closer to the Joker. So I'm going to move uh, two. You can move in any direction as long as you don't pass through these blue lines. So Batman's going to move one, two, and he is now adjacent to the Joker. Their squares are touching diagonally there. And for a second action, he wants to pop him in the face. So I go over to my card, and I have an ability called POW. And you see it has a red icon with the number 2 on it, and it says POW, Challenge 3. 
So I take my red token here and I place it on the two on my ability tracker. Now I don't have any more red tokens left in my pool. So on my next turn, Batman won't be able to activate either of his two red abilities. So all combat in this game is called a challenge. Uh, so like I said, that was a challenge three. So I would roll three dice and I'm looking for successes. Now this happens to be three successes. Uh, on the D6s, there are uh, hits, there are blocks, and there are um, criticals. Criticals count as three successes, either while defending or attacking. Uh, but we got three hits there. So now we would look at Joker's uh, card to see his defense. His defense, he has two. So he would roll two challenge dice against Batman here. And he got one block, which would knock this out. And he would take two damage. Uh, so all characters in this game that I've seen so far, they all have um, you know, only one health. So because I got two successes there, the Joker would be knocked over. Uh, and then if he gets hit again, he is out for the round. He would go on the one track on his track. Um, now why are the tracks cool? Well, the tracks are cool because now at the end of the round, once everybody is activated, all of your tokens will shift down. So now I have to wait one more turn before I'm going to be able to get this red token back to use my reds. So you can kind of see how that would make your team building important. If you want to be able to activate Batman's red abilities more often, you're going to want other characters that bring red to the energy pool. It's kind of a shared thing and it makes it so that no one character is more powerful than the other. Uh, so I thought that was a really cool mechanic and very simple again to explain to non-gamers uh, and children, but deep enough for uh, guys like uh, me or people like me who uh, enjoy uh, strategy games like this. Now uh, that's just kind of the basic mechanics of how um, activations work but uh, each box comes with its own set of scenarios and things like that um, that will play out different and make the game uh, different every time that you play. Plus you add in, you have all the different characters to choose from uh, and you have all the different boards to play on. There are also weapons in each of the box boxes that you can uh, choose to play with on your characters. And uh, overall, it's a very uh, enjoyable game. It's very light, uh, but again, deep enough for, uh, you know, all gamers to uh, really enjoy, especially if you are a big fan of Funko. And who doesn't like pops? Uh, I'm pretty sure everybody on the planet has at least one pop lying around. Well, that was really just a quick overview of, uh, you know, all the different sets that are currently out right now, what comes in the set, how they're packaged, uh, and a little bit of the unique mechanics that make this game different from other games. And uh, so what do I think? I think this game is actually awesome. Uh, and, and I think that because a few reasons. Uh, one, I think that it has enough different mechanics and deep enough mechanics to hold the attention of uh, existing gamers out there, people who want a, uh, a rich strategy game. Uh, but I also think that it's great because uh, of the characters, how uh, many different, um, I mean, how, how cool is it you have Rose and Blanche from the Golden Girls who could be fighting against Lord Voldemort and, um, you know, Batman or something like that. It, it's really cool. Uh, think about all the future expansions. They've already kind of teased um, Jurassic Park, Back to the Future. Uh, they could do Star Wars. They could do uh, Ninja Turtles. They could do Dragon Ball. I mean, literally, the possibilities are endless. And that's another reason why I really like this game. And then the third reason is just because um, it's a great game to introduce non-gamers into the gaming world. Um, it, it really plays out like uh, other miniature games that you might see out there but it's not complicated, it's a lot of fun, and um, I definitely recommend that you pick it up. I think that um, both the smaller versions and the bigger versions have their merits. Um, I think that the big versions are great for people who are starting out, and these are great to add on to that. 
Uh, but if you just want to try it out and you don't want to spend 40 bucks on the bigger version, grab this one for 25 and uh, and check it out. Grab whatever uh, you know IP is your favorite and go from there. All right, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really helps us out a lot. Make sure you share it with your friends and your nerdy communities. If you have any suggestions for the channel, make sure you leave them in the comments uh, down below. I do check all of them and respond to pretty much all of them as well. And uh, if you have any videos you'd like featured on our page, uh, hit us up on one of our many social media platforms. There are links to everything that we have uh, in the uh, description below. Also, make sure you guys check out our uh, podcast. It's called The Cosmic Disaster Show. It airs every Tuesday on every uh, platform that you can hear podcasts on. And if you want to give us a little bit of extra love, uh, definitely check us out on patreon.com slash circle of nerds anyway guys that's all from me i'll see you in the next video you're listening to the cosmic disasters podcast featuring the circle of nerds hey you lucky little f***ers are you gonna listen to it? what when it, what is the last jedi no that the last jedi was the last movie True. This is the, oh, the rise of Skywalker. Rise of my ass, Walker. This yeah. it's trash. It's, not, it's gonna be good. <laughs> they, they destroyed this franchise. Man. They have not. It's good. It's a good it's movie. Rise of my ass, How Walker. Can, you haven't even seen it yet. What do you mean it's a good movie? It'll be good. Uh, there is no. There is no bad Star Wars movie. It's trash. There's the last three of them that came out. No, they're all good. The last three that came out. That's there's two, only been three. The, whatever that bullshit. No, they're good though. It, no, they're all good. Come on, man. They're all good. Like, can I? Can I like my Whoa, fandom? Don't please? you know my like, prequels like that? Hey, hey, I'm a fan, dude. But when, like I said, they should have done this 25, 30 years ago. Come on, man. And then you just they give did. It away it was to called these, Star Wars. JJ. Listen to new episodes of the Cosmic Disasters podcast every Tuesday on your favorite podcasting platform or on our website, circleofnerds.com.